Why do we like to work with mycelium? What are its properties? How does it make these like materials? Is it magic? What is happening underground? So some of the amazing properties of a microcomposite are, well, firstly, it's super lightweight. Um, it acts as a great thermal and acoustic insulator. Um, it's fire resistant <laughs> and water and mold resistant as well. So you can wet it and it, the water will sort of just repel itself off. It's completely compostable and biodegradable. So once it's finished its use, you can throw it into the soil and it will start to decompose and then become a nutrient for the next cycle. It's scalable, which means you can have many different forms and shapes and you can grow it to be pretty big, for example, like a surfboard. And it's super versatile. Yeah, you can pretty much mold it to whatever you want. This is the first prototype. <laughs> and also it is claim to be pound for pound, for pound stronger than concrete. As you can see, it's very durable. So in compression, it would actually be stronger than concrete. Yeah, the reason why that is, is it seems like a pretty magnificent claim, but it's actually the matrix of the mycelium around the substrate that allows it in compression to have more malleability and flexibility, which allows it to take, uh, to yeah, to displace some of the force and some of the pressure, whereas concrete is kind of all uh, more particulate matter that has put together into this material. So if you had, for instance, a bowling ball that is hitting a mycelium brick from a distance, the mycelium brick would have more of a bounce and malleability, flexibility to get take that on that pressure, whereas a cement brick would disintegrate into particulate matter.